The holiday mecca of Punta del Este in Uruguay welcomed the Velux 5 Oceans Round the World Yacht Race to South America this week. While the local population has been enjoying the annual carnival in the streets of Punta, leg three of the Velux 5 Oceans has been coming to an incredibly exciting conclusion out at sea. Ocean Sprint 3 has seen the fleet of Eco 60 yachts journey from Wellington in New Zealand nearly 6,000 nautical miles to the east coast of South America. It's been a gruelling expedition which has included a circumnavigation of the infamous Cape Horn. Once again, American Brad Van Loo has been the class of the fleet during his traverse of the Southern Ocean and Atlantic. The man from Charleston crossed the finish line just off the coast of Uruguay, taking a well-deserved victory in Ocean Sprint 3. Van Loo has now clinched all three of the Ocean Sprints contested so far and has proved to be a mighty adversary for the other three skippers competing in this eighth edition of the race. Holding a dominant position as the race leader in the points table and with only two Ocean Sprints remaining, the 43-year-old American looks strong favourite to carry off the overall victory. However, Van Loo must complete all five legs of the race before he can lift the winner's trophy. During leg three, it hasn't been all plain sailing for Van Loo. As well as worries about rounding Cape Horn and being chased hard the whole way by the rest of the fleet, the American had to fix a failing steering system on his approach to the unpredictable seas of Cape Horn. So after 23 days at sea since leaving Wellington in New Zealand, Brad Van Loo arrived in Punta del Este aboard his 60-foot yacht Le Penguin. Stepping onto South American soil, Van Loo was greeted by well-wishers and saluted for another impressive victory. Where's everybody going? It was time for a taste of champagne and a chance to reflect on arriving in port before his rivals once again. So far so good. Three peat, three legs won and uh, three times around the horn safely is uh, two very important facts for me. This, this race, those are two, two of the biggest hurdles, you know. Cape Horn's always nerve-wracking. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, because the reality is that uh, when you head when you head down south to, to Cape Horn, um, there's a point at which, depending on how the weather's working out, where where you've jumped off the cliff and there's nothing that you can do. Uh, you're going to deal with whatever comes your way as far as weather. And fortunately, uh, I got pretty lucky, and I think we all did. And we know that because we all made it, because when you're unlucky, you don't make it. And um, it was a very special experience for me this time because I actually got to see it, which was even an added bonus. And uh, really, really exciting as much as nerve-wracking. It's nice to be uh, have a good points lead, and it's really good to be here in Punta. I mean, this is a fantastic place, and I've missed it here like 12 years ago, but it's great to be back. While Van Lewis taken victory for a third time, there is a fierce battle for seconds still raging out at sea. Canadian Derek Hatfield, Polish skipper Zbigniew Gutkowski, and Britain Chris Downmore Major are all laying claim to second place on the podium. The trio are separated by only a handful of miles, and it remains to be seen who blinks first in this exciting sprint to the finish line. I think it could go either, it, it could go anyway. I mean, Gutek and, and Derek have engaged in a sort of a one-on-one -on -one duel, and that can distract you enough that, you know, Chris could come right around the back and focus on his own game, because they're thinking about their points, you know, and Gutek and Derek need to, you know, Derek needs to get a second if he can, and he needs to focus on, on Gutek's points, not necessarily Chris's points. So there's a bit of a chess match going on out there, so it's, it's a fantastic battle. The last time I looked at the report there, they are all within a mile of each other. The, um, still Gutek and Derek are looking at each other, Chris is out to the side but he's now gone into second so it's, uh, it's all to play for. They've still got two days to go but um, I'd say Chris is probably looking good here just purely because he hasn't been awake for 48 hours and it's got to affect you.